design and manufacture a uh, emergency evacuation cart. Obviously, it's called the Exodus cart. Um, most people have nicknamed it the bug out cart because that's its intent. Um, the intent was to create a, a device or a system that would fit inside of a, a normal front door, fit inside of a closet, convert, be able to move in many different ways, would have brakes, would roll quietly, uh, would carry a lot of weight without braking. How much weight can you carry? Uh, we, I've tested it with 450 pounds. It's more than you want to push, but because we normally would have about 200 pounds of gear and water, and you might possibly have to deploy the stretcher cover and move an injured person. I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't fold up on you. So, I actually tried a lot of different things on the market and they all failed. So the impetus for me to go ahead and do this was to find something that would actually work. So, this is a great idea. I, I, thank you. I, I was just talking to a friend about sometimes bugging out, you can't even use your car. No. You, you have to walk. Well, what we did was we went, went ahead with a layered approach. We have a receiver deck shelf, which plugs into your two-inch receiver on your vehicle. And then, so what you would do is you'd open your garage, you'd grab your receiver deck shelf, you'd plug it into your vehicle and pin it, you'd drop the ramps, you roll your loaded cart out, it's already packed, drop it on the vehicle, tie it down, bug out. That's great, yeah, right there. You can uh, hook that up to your truck. That's awesome. So that's level one of bug out. Level two is you run out of gas, you hit a bridge that's down, mm -hmm. your, your, your vehicle, the road is damaged, you can't go any further, you ditch the vehicle, you deploy the cart, and go on about your, your, your business. Mm -hmm. you, come, you have 28 liters of water in the bottom, so it counterbalances the rest of your load. And then you have your middle compartment for your next heaviest objects, which would be for your ammunition or uh, heavy foods, mm -hmm. canned foods, anything like that you want to take. And then the larger compartment on top is for your lighter fluffier things so you have less tongue weight on your hands. Gotcha. And then the exterior of the cart, I normally prefer to sell it with all the moly panels on the outside so that all everybody has moly gear and you can buy it at every gun show or the sporting goods stores, uh, survival shops. So you can hang your own gear on there, you can arrange it in a way that makes sense for you, and you can find it in the dark, because if you're bugging out, you're probably going to be working in the dark. You don't want to be flashing lights around unless you have to. Yeah. Uh, we also designed a, a weapons bay on the back, which is recessed, so that your weapons are predominantly out of sight, out of mind. Most of the street cops that we interviewed, uh, not the police chiefs, but the run-of-the-mill street cops, that's what they wanted to see. They didn't want to see guys carrying AR-15s, waving them around, feeling them threatened. That's a good point. So yeah. they wanted them. It's available to you right there on the back of the cart. You stand the cart up and deploy your weapon if you need to. But if you come up to a police checkpoint, you can just set the cart down. It's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And that most the street cops that I talked to agreed that was a real good solution. That is actually a great idea. I always get people all the time uh, on my blog saying, oh, if you're walking around with a, a level three armor plate with a rifle, you kind of stick out. You kind of stick yeah, out. That yeah. is correct. We have uh, solid urethane foam tires instead of pneumatic tires. Uh, we have sealed bearings. We have suspension and, and independent disc brakes. So you, if you're on a hill with a load, you can actually steer it down the hill with, with the brakes. Nice. It's I'll much safer. You don't wreck your knees or your back and everything else. I, li I like the fact that you went with disc brakes instead of the calipers because of water, right? I mean, Well, that was, that was one of the reasons. And the other one is with suspension, the calipers can't move with, oh, the, that's right. with the axle. You'd have to have a fork. We yeah. have to have a big long bracket and the leverage that becomes involved, the bracketing becomes so extreme to structurally, it's almost impossible to handle that kind of a load. Nice. And so. you, you have a way to put armor on here if you want to use this as a cover? We have, we do have an optional bullet resistant panel which can go inside the back. And it, this one in particular is a level two. Uh, it's about the heaviest one that I like right now. We're currently working on a, a different type of, this is fiberglass panel. Yeah. We're working on a different lighter weight panel that we're going to try to offer, but we're negotiating our price on that right oh, now. Okay. So um, the obvious question would be starting off, what kind of price are we looking yeah, at? The, the price range runs from $1,500 to $2,900, depending on the options you put on it. Sure. Plus, we have the bullet panel option, we have the receiver deck shelf option, and we have an ATV tow option. I like that which idea. This is modular, it takes the place of the legs, you just pin it in. There's a receiver for an ATV tow bar. 
a simple rotating pindle so that the ATV, if the trailer flips, it won't throw the rider off the ATV. Nice. Real basic stuff, but it works. I like that idea. That's great. And then this is your stretcher. That is the stretcher option. And you know, hopefully you never have to use it as a stretcher, but it's also a great place to sleep <laughs> rather than in the dirt. Yeah, absolutely. Out here in the okay. desert we got snakes and scorpions. Exactly. I'd rather so, be off the ground like that, absolutely. Yep. It's a compromise. It's not perfectly comfortable. There's some shelves under there. We have sure. some padding built into the stretcher cover, so it's not too bad. Yeah. But it's way better than rocks. Absolutely. So. Soft solar panels, uh, solar charging batteries, so you can charge your rep, walkie talkies, flashlights, and everything else that we have. You have optional lights you can buy. So during the day, that can be charging up, and you can have, you can have light at night or at your campsite, whatever you're going to do. We have a load bearing vest, which you can put on, and it actually clips onto these points. Oh, to help you So that if carry. you're on an open road, like on a paved highway, after you have a long ways to go, you can put the vest on and you can walk hands-free, just clipped on. It does have quick disconnects, you just pinch them and they fall, so you can drop the cart if you need to. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. The other thing, the other thing that happens is these brake handles disconnect from this point here, these legs come out and flip around, they're open on the other end. This brake handle can be mounted here, so that if you're in a high rise and you have to go down 20 flights of stairs, let me show you, you then can use the brakes to bring it down the stairs. So nice. you can evacuate with a loaded cart using the brakes. Very nice. And you said this was purposely designed to go through doorways, huh? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's it's great. To fit through the front door. It's that is awesome. That is a great idea. I love this. I think you're the only guys on the market, huh? Doing we are. this? <laughs> that is awesome. In fact, it was a new patent category. Oh, wow. So we got it kind of locked up. I hope. <laughs> Thank you very much.